called to one mission. We came this far not to lose the war. We are a bunch of aces who never back down from any challenge. We have won battle after battle. Our giant hearts remain intact. Our call of duty is to fight. Fight until we are the only one left standing. It's a festive atmosphere here in the Araneta Center as people from all walks of life are starting to fill up the big dome to witness two different possible historic feats unfold before their eyes. Pure Foods fans wearing the red, white, blue colors of their team will be cheering for the TJ Giants to win the championship tonight and become the second team only in league history next to CRISPA to win the All-Filipino Crown five times. On the other side of the fence, Alaska fans wearing the red, white, black colors of their team will be cheering for the Aces to win the first of four games they need to change history and become the first team in 35 years to come back from a 0-3 deficit to win the championship. Good evening, basketball fans. You are watching live on Solar TV, the finals of the 2009-2010 KFC PBA. Philippine Cup here in the Araneta Coliseum in Cubao, Quezon City. I'm Chiki Reyes and I'll be joining you in the coverage of Game 4 of the Finals between the Pure Food City Giants and the Alaska Aces. But before the tip-off, we have some pre-game events for you, one of which will be the awarding ceremony for the Best Player of the Conference Award. And our nominees for this are Kelly Williams, Mac Macardona, Arwin Santos, Joe Devance, James Yap, and Willie Miller. So, will the confetti and balloons fall for Pure Foods tonight or will Alaska come back on Sunday for Game 5? Hold on to your seats. It's the Pure Foods TJ Giants versus the Alaska Aces in a few minutes. Goes in the favor of the Pure Foods TJ Giants. Ball is now in play. It's over the Canonetta for three. No, it's short. And that is going to sail out of bounds. When KJ took that hurried shot, I heard nothing on the bench, but let's bail him out, let's bail him out. I don't think it's coming down to energy. I think it's coming down to their uh, ability to defend and, and the, the execution. Uh, they've actually out-executed this down the stretch. Oh, there's a turnover there. Kirby gets it back. 12 seconds on the shot clock. Kirby trying to work around the D. He gets full of the finger roll. Kirby then will be his all fired up. Five seconds of that play. Nobody coming out and receive the last of Miller. Makes it in the nick of time. What a difficult shot by Willie Miller. I respect the game of Willie Miller. And towards the end, you always want to give it to your best player. That's why we really made sure that Willie at least makes a contested shot. It's Willie Miller. Willie Miller almost loses his footy. A second to go. There's the jumper off the glass. No! And the beautiful DJ Giants have taken game number three. And once again, our defense held up. And there are two questions you ask when one team in a game, uh, in a series that goes seven games, supposed to go seven games, when one team reaches three wins already. The first question you ask is the team that has already scored three wins, will they close out tonight? On the other side of the floor, the team that has not won three games, and in fact has not won a single game, can they stay alive? Sam Sarmenta here, alongside my good friend of 20 years. I have very few friends from 20, over 20 years, and Dr. J definitely one of them. Dr. J, it's been a close series, despite the awesome lead of Pure Foods. Yeah, pleasant good evening to you, uh, Seb, and to all our basketball fans. There are obviously a lot of Pure Foods fans hoping that they can close out, close the drought since 2006. I think that was the last championship for Pure Foods. And then obviously on the Alaska side, to want to be able to redeem themselves. They have not played well in the series. And characteristic of this team to be giving up big leads, double digit leads in games two and three and to lose in the end game. It doesn't happen to the Alaska Aces. So this is what they hope to be able to overturn tonight. Are they capable? Of course they are. It just depends on the kind of uh, attitude they, they put to this game. Absolutely, because if you take a look at the numbers, they're somewhat misleading and they do not actually 
Fortify the 3 0 edge at Pure Foods, but take nothing away from Pure Foods. It's been close so far. Well, look at the games now. The plus points are only a plus two, which is the difference of three games, a total of six points. The two point for field goal percentage has been in favor of Pure Foods. That means their big men have been able to get the inside game, and as Tima said, they've executed well and they've scored higher percentage shots. Free throw shots, not very good for Pure Foods. The rebounding department, you would probably think that Pure Foods would have an advantage because of their big men, but Alaska doing their fair share of that area, even the assists, and that is why it's been a close game. But the points coming in the end game, when it really counts, have come from the Pure Foods. Uh, tender gi uh, giants. As you will see in the next graphic, because it's been in the fourth quarter, and you're absolutely correct, Dr. J. Lalamang ang Alaska, tapos mawawala sa fourth quarter. Look at the third quarter, Alaska has taken that by three points, but Pure Foods takes the fourth quarter by an average of 4.6 points a ball game. So, you know, they've never gone to a fourth quarter where they've been down by six, eight, ten points, that they've been scared that we cannot make the comeback. Their defense has been their key. They've been able to make stops, and eventually, I feel Alaska has started out in the fourth game, especially in game number three, where the rotation was very much shortened, and a lot of players that played in the first two games did not see action at all in game number three, especially in the second half. On the other side of the floor, a bit of the bench being utilized, and a slight edge in bench scoring, as you will see in this picture. Well, this is where Pew Foods really strengthened up. And I, like I said, because of the longer rotation on the part of Coach Ryan Gregorio, up to 10 players, even though some may only play 4-5 or five minutes per half, you can see what happened there. The big advantage, a little advantage on the uh, guys coming off the bench, especially led by Canaleta. Don Aliado has been trying to relieve some of his old glory. Jun Simon had a good game in game number three, and Meyer Offer together also had a good game in game number three. On the other hand, Puknatan has been the only one, but for me, really, he's been a missing link because that's 6.7 points and only five rebounds a game, plus 4.3 turnovers, and many of them in the end game have hurt the team of Alaska. This is the guy that they really expect a lot, and maybe tonight you will find the reason why Team Cone has put him into the starting lineup. Might as well start getting off started early. In the meantime, we, of course, we've been focusing also on a battle of MVPs. Of course, uh, they have to carry the load. Well, we have a two-time MVP, Willie Miller. Not really ringing Miller time right now in the end game for the last few games for Alaska. Although he has been very consistent with his numbers. 18 and a half points, not high in the three-point percentage, rebounds, assists. He also averages 3.6 turnovers per game in this championship series. James has really come out from his very poor performance in the quarterfinals, improving in the semifinals, and just really been fantastic here in the finals with an average of 23 points, 36% from three-point shooting. Improved defense on the part of James Up, which has never been his forte. And this is the reason why they are on top three to nothing here. Aside from the regular stars, of course, it's always good when a team has new stars coming up on the horizon. Rafi Reed is definitely a contributor for Pure Foods. Well, they were able to get in in exchange for Rico Villanueva. They found a defender, a 6'9", who's played in the championship games. And look at his averages. Nobody can box him out. He stays on the floor longer than Sonny Toss. Sonny should also be averaging in double figures if he can only keep himself in the ball game. Average of almost 5,000 ball game fouled out last game. Rafi Rivas has defended without fouling and certainly has done a good job on rebounding and defense. Okay, and we are just moments away from game number four. I'll send it downstairs to our Coliseum announcer for some very important presentations before we start the game. Good evening, PBA fans. Before we start game four of the 2009-2010 KFC PBA Philippine Cup Finals, we would like to present to you two special awards tonight. The KFC Delivery Assist Player of the Conference and the Best Player of the 2009-2010 KFC PBA Philippine Cup. We will first give a special award to the KFC Delivery Assist Player of the Conference. This award is based on the best assist play achieved by your favorite PBA superstar. Ladies and gentlemen, here are your top assist plays of the conference.
From the Burger King offers, Alex Kamagnoy. From the Barangay in Everking, JJ Helterbrand. From the San Miguel Beerman, Jonas Villanueva. From the Alaska Aces, Willie Miller. And also from the Alaska Aces, L.A. Tenorio. And to award a KFC Delivery Assist Player of the Conference, may we please call in on center court PBA Commissioner Sonny Barrios, together with the Marketing Services Managers of KFC, Ms. Melissa Ahop and Ms. Annie Mananzan. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2009-2010 KFC Delivery Assist Player of the Conference from the Alaska Aces, L.A. Tenorio. Congratulations, L.A. Tenorio will receive 5,000 pesos cash and 5,000 pesos worth of gift certificate from KFC. Thank you very much. Congratulations, L.A. Tenorio. Thank you very much, Ms. Melissa Agop and Ms. Annie Mananzai. May we request PBA Commissioner Sani Barrios to stay on center court? And now, ladies and gentlemen, here are the candidates for the best player of the conference. Here are the nominees for the best player of the conference award. From Central Lucia Realtors, Kelly Williams. From Talking Text, Dropping Texters, Matt Cardona. From San Miguel Beerman, Arwen Santos. From Alaska Aces, Joe Devons. From Pure Food CJ Giants, James Yap. And from Alaska Aces, Willie Miller. And the best player of the conference, garnering 211 statistical votes, 591 media votes, 128 votes from the players, 300 votes from Solar TV, and 150 votes from the PBA for a total of 1,380 votes. The best player of the 2009-2010 KFC PBA Philippine Cup. From the Purefoods, DJ Giants, James Young. And a 2009-2010 Philippine Cup best player of the conference award goes to... James Yap of the Beer Foods DJ Giants. Congratulations, our best player of the conference, James Yap. And thank you very much, PBA Commissioner Sonny Barrios. Congratulations to our winners of special prizes, LA Dinari, and of course, our best player of the conference, James Yap. Just moments away. Now, Dr. Jake, I think the question begs to be asked. 
why is it so difficult to come back from 3 and you know, and in sports it's a rarity that teams manage to come back and in basketball i think it's even harder to be able to make a comeback yeah especially in a best of seven series and i i really believe i i put it down in two two words you know and i think number one is pressure i think no matter what you say a team you will say zero zero three there's no pressure that's not true you played the whole conference you played the elimination round you played semi-finals to get to this point to win a championship and every game becomes a lot of pressure unlike the other team who has a lot of leeway for pure foods in this case they have a lot of leeway the other thing Seb, is i think we're all human beings it's always easy to say you think one game at a time but you're a human being when you're on the floor you can't think of one game at a time this is a championship series the other team is looking at the championship so that adds another factor of pressure to yourself now you talk of the other thing confidence the confidence level of alaska is obviously not very high they have not been the same alaska aces that we have known like i said it's uncharacteristic of this team to be losing in an end game especially when they have a good size lead in the fourth quarter just doesn't happen they hope to be able to correct that today the other thing if you go to the other side conversely with pure foods they have a lot of confidence because they make comebacks from big amount uh, from big leads and eventually win a very close game that should add tons of confidence to their game those are the things that i think make it difficult for a team to come back to have to do it four times in a row and that is why maybe it's never happened in basketball in other sports like the uh, yankees versus boston it did happen in the american league uh, series a couple of years back and boston went on to win their first championship in the new era and uh, that i think that happened also in hockey but i'm not sure of the teams right now so you know that my is the factor that i feel it's difficult now again coaches would say like team he, he believes in the fact that we played those games it could have been ours and that's why that is what he's going to tell his players we might have to win one in order to break that thing that monotony that's been happening to us that lack of confidence we win one we can go on and look at game number five Absolutely. and so on and so forth so deal with the pressure that is definitely layered here and then it might boost our confidence later on yeah because remember they they top the elimination rounds together with san miguel they had 13 wins but they were able to also they also had a losing streak but they were able to come back from that in late january yes today is the first game of march that they are going to play this series. It has always been played in uh -huh. February. Mak baka ma iba. <laughs> yeah, they're hoping ma ma iba naman. Of course, this is the same Alaska team that shot out Barangay Ginebra. Lest we forget that the first attempt by Pure Foods goes awry. Here we go with the setup job for Alaska. The Aces with defense. And of course, as pointed out, Ugnatan will be starting off. And a nice deal by Roger. Lead pass to Curly Raimundo, who's slightly ahead, down. And you can see Sanitos laid off. Ordinarily, he would have tried to block that shot, maybe commit another foul, but maybe you are still. Take yourself away from giving up fouls. Some points you just have to give up to your opponents. Kirby averaging 12 points in the series. Here's Toss with that hook of his, it drops in. No change in the lineups for the first starting five for Pure Foods, but we already mentioned that Tony De La Cruz was taken out of the starting five lineup and in, was in, and in his place with uh, Reynel Ognatan being inserted in. Fingers trying to make a decision here. Shot clock coming down to seven. Here comes James. Let's it fly. Left of the circle. Won't go. Here's Miller, double digits all the way in the series. That won't bite, however, Raimundo is there to pick it up. Well, the two candidates both had open shots there. Each one with a miss. In the meantime, Roger. This is a guy that has really improved this game a lot. Made it terrible for all the teams that they had to face in the semifinals, in the quarterfinals. You know, his matchup against the point guard has been always in his favor. And he's up against Tenorio. Here's the Vance launching with less than 10 seconds on the shot clock. That won't drop in. And it'll go the other way to Pure Foods. And let's send uh, it over to 
Tiki Rash, Tiki. Thank you, Seven. The dugout after game three, Coach Tim didn't waste time to send this message across. We are doing something right because the games have been close, but we have to stop what we are doing wrong. And according to the coaching staff of Alaska, what they're doing wrong is that they have frequently relied on their one on one skills rather than the passing game that Alaska is known for. What Coach Tim wants is more ball and player movement rather than attacks via one on one plays. Battle Cry of the Aces tonight. If they can beat us three straight times, we can also beat them three straight times, eh? Thank you, Chicky. Chicky, of course, will be uh, watching Alaska all night long. Our ball game. Sorry, Dr. Jack, 4 2. Go ahead, please. I was just going to say that they want to get Hutnata started. These are not the numbers of Reynal Hutnata, and especially the turnovers. So they want to get him started. They put him on the post, isolated with Mark Pingris, sealing him deep, and picking up an early foul from Pingris. Again, the touch there, Pingris is all over him. That is not a guy who can really put the ball on the floor yes. to get to the basket. It's been unforgiving that defense of Pure Foods. Here comes the Vans, has no time to make a decision. It's heavy traffic, it's slotted by Rivas, but there's a foul prior to the block. Well, that was just very good defense by Rivas. You know, he takes so much pride in his defense, he's surprised when a foul is called on him, actually. Watch this. A look at this, he never jumps, he, well, he jumped a little bit, but he was able to get a second jump, got a clear block. And Devance missing that first free throw. Well, these are the finals, and I agree with you 100%. You're in the pressure cooker, no question about it. Two misses by Devance. Roger playing with supreme confidence on the other hand. There's Yap, swings left, goes right, hands up to Raimundo. Shot clock up and down to 10. Kirby, Kirby nowhere to go. Inside we go to Pingris. Pingris short stab, and there's a foul. Again, Sanitos picking up an early foul. By the way, the gentlemen with the whistles are Aldaba, Balao, and Pasquale with numbers 57, 70, and 76, respectively. Good averages for Mark Pingris, 8 points, 9.7 rebounds. A lot of other factor with this very sticky like defense, plus the scrambling of, for the loose balls if you cannot get a rebound. You know, those are the things that have certainly helped the team in setting up picks. You know. But those are the things that coaches observe and notice. 13 points in the first game, takes care of the second free throw. How important is it for Alaska to have a better start? They've had good starts in the series, but do they need a better start, Dr. J? Not really, uh, because unless you can get a 20-point lead, <laughs> then you can say maybe you have a, a lot of margin to work with. But And another steal here. Too many turnovers for Alaska. They might be, they're not going to call a timeout. Oh! Conference MVP babying it. I think he took his eye off the hook. Roger tries to clean up the mess. And there's a timeout Alaska is going to ask for. Pure Foods coming out of the gates with passion. 7-2 to two with 8.25 to go. Okay, to report to us about Pure Foods tonight will be Dominic Goy. Thank you, Sev. The Pure Foods DJ Giants are up 3-0 in this series, but they are playing game number four with guarded optimism because they know that the Alaska Aces can come back. They are thinking of just game number four and how did they win the first three games is how they're going to win or how they're going to play game number four. They're looking at defense, defense by disruption, denial of the passing lanes, and constant pressure of the ball. Dominic Goy. He's not really Clark Kent, if you think about it. <laughs> no, he's not. No, he's not. We'll be reporting, as we mentioned, about Pure Foods all night long. And James taking care of the inside. He's a with the layup that he didn't miss. You know, it's hard to declare an MVP. It puts a lot of pressure on you. Yes, it did. Even to Alpin, it has happened. Oh, we've seen that through the years. In the meantime, the spin. All good move by the big guy. Four points in the ball game for Sunny Toss, the only player to have scored for Alaska here. 
Remember, the Vans had the chance, but he missed two free throws. James has started off slowly here. Not that he really has played good defense. He's just starting off slowly. An engine slow to rev up. Meanwhile, here comes Lieutenant Adrenaline. They shot the last moment, and they want to go to this guy early on. As you notice, that is something that never happened for Alaska. They couldn't get a lot of fast break points in the first three games. And an easy timeout here called by Pure Foods. Back with us here for game number four of the finals. And you know, this guy has always been one of the uh, important players for the uh, Pure Standard UC Giants. Again, San Miguel, look at him in the semifinals. Almost 15 points of ball game. Very high shooting percentage. Pretty good percentage from the field. Takes good shots, Dr. J. Yeah, you know. And when he can glide to the basket, he's doubly hard to stop. But you know... First pair of points by the conference MVP. Nine to six, Pure Foods advancing early on here in the opening quarter, hoping to seal the deal here tonight. Glasgow, of course, hoping that they will include basketball in their schedule tomorrow. Dominic, what do you have? Seb, just a little bit of trivia. Historically, the last four guys who won the best player of the conference, and during that awarding night, his team actually lost. So if you look, looking at it historically, the odds aren't going for Pure Foods. Lost the game only. All right, you're, 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 yeah. hey, you're making sure James have the interior just now, huh? Okay. In the meantime, you just picked up that loose ball, Dominic. In the meantime, he's rushing. He's trying to go against Miller. That's, uh, early, early in this game, Alaska has already committed three clear turnovers. And they've been translated into layups on the other end. Actually, James even missed one. I missed two in a sequence. No? Took his eye off the hoop, actually. Tried to follow up. Still didn't have his eye on the hoop. But it would be his nice pass. Pass is doubled up. Doubled up by the D. Below the six-minute mark now. James against Willie. Inside to Mark. It's like the apostles here. <laughs> Turn around by Mark Bingus. Elite you know, you're trying to be a little more deliberate, trying to set up the table properly here. Nice pass inside the toss, up against four. Toss has to kick up. LA on the receiving end. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Bit of traffic. LA succeeds in delivering. That would have been another turnover. Just for lucky for Alaska that the ball slipped back to LA who was underneath the basket. But again, they're very, very tentative with shooting underneath the basket, afraid of being blocked by the big men defense of Pure Foods. Just have to admire the way that defense of Pure Foods has rotated on toss when he receives it downstairs where he likes it. There's Roger, lets it fly from right corner, big short. He'll go to Alaska. Chicky, what do you have? Thank you, Seb. If you're wondering why Reynal Hugnatan took the place of Tony De La Cruz in the starting five of Alaska, assistant coach Dickie Bachman said that they want James Yap to play defense early on. Versus Tony De La Cruz, James can relax on defense, but versus Reynal Hugnatan, he's forced to defend harder. Seb? Those are other factors, of course. Well, he's not guarding actually Reynal Hugnatan, but what happens there is Alaska runs someplace for them to switch off. No. You see, right now the matchup is, of course, Pingris and Hugnatan. But they do run some place wherein he screens off, and then a smaller man has to pick him up. Boss lets it fly right on the uh, circle area. They can get six points now, and he has six of the ten. Well, you know, a guy that has been missing simply because he couldn't play uh, because of foul trouble, oh, yes. averaging almost ten points, but he certainly could be more and do more. James is open. And the three-point shot set by the screen of Kirby Raimundo. Of course, Alaska is complaining that that was an illegal screen because Kirby ran into the pot. And then an offensive foul. And we have Tronji Aldaba then refereeing this ball game. And Tim Cohn. But they cannot forget Tronji Aldaba. Oh, yes. They, no, they, they won't. Yeah, they, they'll never forget him. <laughs> they already forgot the other guy because he's not around. <laughs> P. 
Your boots ahead by four, four minutes and four remaining. James. Not offensive foul, but I think that will be almost close to traveling because he lost his footing there before banging into an established defender like uh, Reynald Huptaka. And he's still, still, still uh, talking with uh, Aldaba, who was the referee of the year last year. It has always happened yep. whoever is the referee of the year before has suffered a... Uh, you know, of course, he's been still referee, but they've all had their problems. Some, Many of them are no longer here. As a matter of fact, all of them are no longer here. Okay. Aces with the early uh, change of possession. Miller launches. Hold it as the referee. There's a foul. You know, Willie has been very silent uh, through this. I know in his heart he feels very, very sad that he's not been playing up to the level. As a matter of fact, Willie's expiring, I think, by the end of the next conference. Next conference. So huh? obviously, you know, he would like to go out in style if he will stay with the last cover wherever he goes. But he got hit in the nose again in that play, you know? maybe in the lip. So that might be a cut there, which they probably, well, he's okay. If there's bleeding, they would obviously have had 30 seconds to, to stop the bleeding. Shot clock is 14, 3.45 to the opening quarter, game number four. Here puts, of course, leading in the series. Three games to nail. Miller, creating, unable to drop it in. Under the basket, there's traffic and there's a push. Or is it an offensive foul? I think, yes, there was a push by Hignata from behind. Oh. And that was caught by referee Pasquale. That was second personal foul, yeah. In the meantime, 3.27 to go. Fingers, Peñaleta. Baseline cut by Simon who's in the game. Makes his move, six on the shot clock, 15 footer, bang! This guy is also an instant offense type of a player. That's a difficult shot, especially for a player coming off the bench. 12 points in game number three. You pointed it out earlier, Dr. J, that he played well there. But not and gets a stretch. Come take of calls here. They'll call it as an offensive foul. And the entire coaching, the coaching staff, uh, at least parts of them, reacting. Tim Cohn, of course. And he's already on the floor. And we'll take a short break and be back with you in a while. Okay, welcome back. So many things happening in that gap, actually. Tim Cohn was already called for a technical. He was inviting the referees to call it on him, actually. Well, he went into the middle of the court, and that's a, that's a no-no. Well, obviously, he wanted to stay to the point because I thought Aldaba was going to call an N1 for Hudnata. But he changed his call when he saw Balao coming in. Balao was very in, uh, sure about the fact that it was an offensive foul. So he, he gave way to Balao. So there was no conflicting calls, which would have resulted in a jump on. He just gave way. And that was when Team Blue stopped there. 17 to 10, Pierpoods jumping out in front. Nice pass downstairs. Well, that's surprising because De La Cruz with a good jump and being able to block the shot of Rafa Rivas. Rivas was too deep, he couldn't dunk it now. 16,589 fans joining all of you, wherever you may be in this nation of ours, this great country of ours. I mean, trying to advance, looking inside, a quick turnaround shot, the South Pole stab both work. Rebound picked up by Miller. Well, there might be a couple of hundred more in a few minutes, you know. Yep, I agree. Still early here. Okay, more space as well. Under the basket we go, there's a traffic jam, nowhere to go! One side street to enter into, but there's a good stop at it. Another offensive foul. I guess so. I guess. Made by Balo. And Tim Cohn 
Already would have taken himself out. He's not going to take himself nope. out of the game. Not tonight. But you can see here, he's so deep. He really has no place. I think that was just overacting. I don't really think he could have moved him that much. Maybe an offensive fouling because there was a motion to hit him to get him out of the way. Well, it's Oscar season, Dr. Jack. Kailan niya? Malapit niya. Malapit na. Daming kumaganda kandidata. Sa Oscars, ha? Kirby, bottled up. Very good move and up and under move by Kirby Raimondo. And the biggest lead of the ball game for the TJ, for Pure Foods Giants here. And I guess the biggest compliment when you are imitated by players in a covered courts, uh, like in Atenea, the kids, they like to do their Kirby move. The up and under just mastered that. Here's the Vance, his version. The defense, oh boy, no shot remains unchallenged when it's Pure Foods playing D. Yeah, and you know, the thing that they, if you look at the whole series, it's been down to one thing. Pure Foods has gone into this series. We're going to take away the points of Willie Miller and L.A. Tenorio. We're going to take away the penetration of Willie Miller and Tenorio. And we will jump every high pick and roll that they do. No matter what happens, even if we are faced with a mismatch, with their big man setting the pick, we will go back to them. But we will not let L.A. and Willie Miller penetrate because those are the times when they can kick out, make easy layups, pass the ball. Those are the things that uh, Pure Foods has taken away from Alaska. If you were to use a metaphor, Pure Foods has taken away the batons from the conductors of the orchestra. Kaya nga sinasabi nga ni Tim ko, hindi kami maka-execute. Lalo na sa dulo. We cannot execute kasi linalabanan nila lahat. And they've taken away. Throughout the conference, if you notice, everybody was saying Alaska was playing so well because of two players being able to conduct so well. Willie Miller and L.A. Tenorio. And the other, by the way, is in the game already. Here's Kirby Raimundo, still there. There's, how will this go? An offensive foul. They call it against Taliado. A lot of offensive fouls are being called in this ball game. Yeah, Bala was a pretty good referee. I've been uh, watching him through the years. He's, he's also very emphatic with his calls. Yeah. L.A. Tenorio sees how the offense is flowing. 48 seconds remaining. 11 on this set, here's Ferriols. He's a guy that's really played well for Alaska coming off the bench. That ah. experience, you know, he's really come off the bench. For me, he's played so much better than Ugnatan, but he doesn't get that enough time. But he is very, very steady. And, uh, you know, he's not big, but he does play big uh, underneath the basket. One more apostle on the board, I'll forget. That's Not right. <laughs> Averaging five points in the series. You know, St. John is the youngest, but here he <laughs> might be the oldest. <laughs> Next to Mariaso. That oh, is Kirby! Queen as a whistle, the veteran with seven. KG, favorite player of Kirby Raimundo. Oh, KG, yes. Kevin Garnett. Huge pick by Ferriol, six seconds remaining. The fly goes inside, may go to the free throw line. So he's one guy that's been able to penetrate because he didn't choose any pick and rolls. He did it by the cross the dribble, though. No? Changing from left to right, the crossover, and then moving quickly to the basket. So he was able to get to the basket and get a foul. Dr. J, you're right about the extra hundred or so still uh, coming in, coming, coming in. in. And really, Marshall, the media bureau chief, is in a state of utter confusion right now. And you can see a lot of standing up uh, being yeah. done there, especially in the upper level as well as in the gallery section. And we would like to later, later. Suspense. Hold that thought. Hold that thought. Oh! Mina master ng ngayon yan. Baka sakaling magamit sa game in the future. We'll hold the thought of Dr. J. Get back to that very quickly. But Pure Foods is ahead in the first quarter of game number four. Is this the night for them? We'll find out. There's something about this old boys crew tonight, but I don't mind really. Chiki, go ahead. Thank you, Seb. You know, the jersey of Willie Miller is partly covered with blood, according to the PT of Alaska. The swollen nose of Willie bled again after it got hit accidentally by James Yap. This was the same injury he suffered when Rafi Rivas hit his nose in Game 3. But it's Game 4, so expect Willie to finish this game regardless of the condition of his nose, Seb. 
And the second quarter is underway. Tenorio right, to steal it away. Got it. Lead pass now. The van slows down. Aliado's waiting for him. So in the first quarter, Dr. J, we found your goods getting some of the job done defensively as well. Let's make this pull and lift the tira now. At saka maganda depensa sa kanya ni uh, Salvador, no? Never beat it to any fake. It was just on top of him. If he makes the shot, he makes it. Manuelita to Mayor Hoffer. A new set of warriors already on the floor for Pure Foods. Well, with the kind of defense that you extend, fighting all screens, jumping on anything, you better have fresh players on the court, and that's exactly what they had. But they, caught with, they got caught with a 24-second shot clock violation. Kinabaan na niya rotation niya talaga. Ah, oh. Kahit tatlong minuto, tatlong minuto lang maibigay niyo sa akin, okay na sa kay Ryan yan. And there's that blood uh, that Chiki was talking about. Applying Tenorio together with Perioles. Dela Cruz on the floor, Devance, the, the fifth man completing the quintet on the floor. Devance, 15 foot line, tries to dance in the box, was clipped on the arm, Salvador will reach for the sky. That's taking care of the first, and I'd like you to meet the Valderrama family because here at the PBA we don't just give action packed games, we also provide great surprises like our Mr. Donald Surprise family of the game. Congratulations to the Valderrama family, Mr. Donut, Sarampang Surprise. Valderrama, and then nice name, though. No? Mm, Spanish, mm. there's a place in Spain, Valderrama. I think so, yes. Jewish images of well, we'll keep it at that. James Shap back in the ball game for Canaleta. Arpadi. I saw him arrive at the Coliseum and he has one of the smallest cars I have ever seen. And he says, I'm cute and also same. <laughs> Look at this move by Arpadi. As you can see the Banshee's feet. He's in that uh, circle, so he's going to be called for the blocking foul. And a three-point play coming up here for uh, Paul Artadi. Well, Pilford certainly plucked the right players from Ginebra and from San Miguel. Both are winners. <laughs> oh, yes, you know, indeed. Ar Artadi and uh, Pinguis. And they hope to be able to translate into another championship, this time with another team. Pressure in the backcourt. Miller, L.A. Good block! They pass. Wow, a little ah. bit too long. I think Meyer Hoffer hesitated a little bit. He should be running towards the basket. And Artadi would have thrown it to the basket. Obviously, the advantage of height would have been for Meyer Hoffer. Look at how high they meet their players. And then forcing that turnover. How high? That's 30 feet away from the basket. That guy's not going to shoot from there. But what they want to do is disrupt the passing, the triangle offense, and they've done a great job on that. Throughout the series. Second quarter, Johnson, 9.45, 24-17 count. And Aliado setting an illegal pick there. And Aliado ends up with his second foul. Bruno John is uh, jumping up and down, not because whether he fouled it or not, just wants to play and usually two fouls signals the coaches to uh, bring him out. Dan is far from the prime of his career. Actually, he's been moving from team to team, Dan, marami na rin nag-iisip, does he still have it, no? But uh, certainly it's shown. Look how far they need you, how far they get into your boat. That's a 5'10", guarding a 6'5". Player. 9.32 remaining. And the Aces need to talk things over. Huge size crowd, close to 17,000. Oh boy, they're happy despite the fact their team behind right now. 
happy to be on television as well. Well, Alaska is in red. Their fans, while well, Pure Foods, blue and red the kanilang uniform, dark. But they're in blue, yung mga fans nila. <laughs> oh, oh, God, yes! Yes! Nakakadipensa, nakablangka pa, nakashoot pa. Well, Salvador really giving them a big lift here. That's what Pure Foods has been able to find throughout the series. Even in his amateur days, quite a contributor, quite a scorer in fact. Uh, he was a very high pick. I think number two pick overall there, or number three. I, I, I'm not sure. Come on. Dominic, if you've uh, got a uh, report, yeah, let's give it to you. One thing that was very successful for the TJ Giants in that San Miguel series was a biblical passage that uh, Coach Koi Banao shared with them. It's a story about David and Goliath. Now they are actually up 3-0. and oh. They reminded the players and said, you know what, remember what we did in game number six? We cut off the head of Goliath. Well, that's what we need to do today to be able to win this championship. It's all right to be blind because as long as the metaphor is correct, huh? right? Okay. <laughs> Get the point, guys. You can go on and on. The most quoted book of all time. I guess so what you reap what you saw and all that and all that uh, will probably apply as well. In the meantime, 26-17, 8:39 remaining. Willie Miller. He needs to explore there in a huge way for. Alaska for them to stay alive in this series. Yeah, right. he's open. Oh, wide open. But there was contact underneath. I like our Taddy. He's the only one who admitted he committed the foul. <laughs> Nobody else has done so in this game so far. <laughs> it, it, it ends the discussion quickly, doesn't it? Taboos. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> you remember, know what? remember the olden days when you uh, were had to raise your hand? Yeah, yeah it, was, it was a uh, no, rule. It was an SOP. No? Yes. The referee got made make you sure make sure that you raised your hand. Miller. Great opportunity for a three-point play, but even missing that one. Samantala, in celebration of the Ironetta Coliseum's uh, 50th anniversary, the Ironetta Center presents Julio Iglesias in Heart of Gold. And uh, Julio will be here on March 20 for a special charity concert to benefit the Typhoon Undoi victims. Buy your tickets now, 911-5555, ticketnet.com.ph, the other place to go to. Willie Miller missing that first free throw. Alaska only 17 points. Happy birthday, Commissioner. Happy birthday, Pare. And of course, uh, kanyang consultant sa uh, ano si Romy Guevara, yes. uh, Sunny Bali is uh, celebrating his birthday tomorrow. So he hopes that there will be no discussions. Nobody comes to see him, but uh, let's see. I certainly would like to have a day with his family. Yes. Don't want to be talking about basketball. There's a game on Sunday, so be it. <laughs> in the meantime, they tap it around and lands in the hands of Alaska. Eight minutes and three remaining. Willie uncorks. Malayo ang tira ni Willie. You can see there, there's no confidence in that shot. No? It's not the way I know him, you know. Parang walang bitik, walang uh, lutong. Shot clock at six. Kirby says set, fire, bang! Ano na, ibang-iba yung nasa kapila. Itong player na small forward, power forward. Ang galing to vera ng three-point shot. Parang Olympic sport, ano? Set, fire, bang! Parang clay, skeet shooting. Decision time with five on the shot clock. Good turn, overcooked. Rebound, Miller has it. Ah. Shot clock continues. Oh, and he just realized that at the last second, that there was only one second left. Na hindi tumama yung bola sa ring. But, you know presence of mind on the part of the thriller. Better time to have an epiphany than never at all, Dr. J. Favorite shot of James Shop. Driving to the basket, holding it with one hand. Second team foul on Miller. Yeah, ball set for charities. It's the first. 
Come on, Dad, I want to go home early. <laughs> In the meantime, meet uh, Jabel. And she's our Francie Cologne refreshing face of the game. Francie Cologne, ang pabango ng bayan. The friend, she? Yeah, she's right yeah, behind, behind us. And the friend said, Sige, kawai ka dyan. Nagulat niya ako. Para nakita ko na yung babae. Kanina sa opening. 31-20. 653 to go. Look at that trap there. Ah, gotcha. We can't have a, a Bombalan being the one throwing that in, you know. But Kirby. You know, I like about Pingris. You might say that he does not have confidence in the shot, but the one thing he'll do correctly is he'll follow in for his follow-up to go in for his own miss. In the meantime, we've got a full cease fire. It's a 13-point lead back in a moment. Your Foods currently enjoying its biggest spread in the ball game. 6.25 remaining in the quarter. Sam Sarmenta with the doctor Andy Rao here together with Tiki Reyes and Dominic Coy. Nice pass to Thos who cans it. He's the only guy who's really played well for the team. He's got eight points. Really shows that uh, a big man can still be dominating. You can easily stop a small man if you send two men to him. But a big man, really very difficult to stop. Some numbers on your picture. Want to share in the ballgame for the first time, commits his first foul. Sideline inbound. Roger tried to dance inside. Oh boy, he just created that. Roger with six. Here's the Vance. Shot clock coming down to seven. The Vance, Miller gets it to bite. Again, really bailing them out. The Vance unwilling to take a shot that Tenorio had kicked out already. And really, again, after time pressure, making a big three point shot here. Larry, Larry. Larry one second in, I'm going to go. Roger. Magandang defense ni Willie kay Roger Yap yun. That resulted into that turnover because Larry was on top of James Yap all the way. 10-point game. 5-0-5 remaining here in uh, game four. And it's, uh, it's first half. Miller. Fingers with a foul. Chiki, what do you have? Thanks to having the last time out of Alaska, Coach Tim Cohn told his boys, guys, you are playing as if you don't care. He then reminded his players to play calm, to play intelligent basketball, to get screens properly, pass the ball with precision, and avoid turning the ball over. Sam? Dr. J, let's go back to those two points about confidence and um, the poise. Well, the pressure, the pressure, the pressure is on Alaska. Sorry. Every game, talaga may problema sila. Every game that they have to play after being down 0 three. Just quickly, KFC delivery assist of the quarter. Joy watching the big game, finger looking foot. 887-8888 now. Then the confidence level on the part of pure foods. And then now you see that everything that they have done defensively and offensively have, the, have done correctly. So they're not going to go out of that comfort zone. Well, it's for Alaska to keep on thinking of ideas what to do. Maybe they've stopped thinking of ideas and just let's say, let's just play naturally. We're not playing naturally because we don't have the confidence. Difficult uh, pocket to be in. Yeah, like, maganda defense in Alaska. But I thought Kirby had an opportunity there. To reset and recycle. Larry Bonacher trying to gain momentum. This is the shot. The follow-up by Miller. It won't drop. Your foot's doing a good job not giving up on the last sequence. Roger applies the brakes, kicks it outside. Simon. Follow up. There's a push. There's a 
push from behind it might be on uh, Ribis or on Pingris let me see Rafi Ribis now this is something that's working against Pilfoots by getting into the penalty early in this quarter has allowed Alaska to go to the free throw line a lot and they're literally crawling back into the ball game still a long way to yes, go yes indeed But they'll take this, Dr. J. No matter how hard it is, they'll take this arduous journey if they have to. They want to stay alive and include basketball in their week's schedule. Yeah, you know, because we'll, we'd like to let you know, whatever happens, if uh, if Alaska can win, we won't have a game on Friday. Araneta is not available. And if there's a game fight, it's scheduled on Sunday here at Araneta. So right with that in mind, Alaska knows you just have to put all your bodies on the floor. There's nothing left anymore anyway if you lose. So you have to give it all. But if you can win, you have a rest day. Yep. You have Thursday and Friday and Saturday. You know, so you can, you can rest Thursday and practice yep. Friday and Saturday. Something similar to what Rick Bettina told his Providence team and uh, the US NCAA. Probably they're better than us, but there's one thing we can do left. Put our hearts on the floor. Maybe something will happen. That shot rings the bell, however. Two-point shot for Roger Yap. Seven points in the ball game now for Roger. Right. Kirby leads them with ten points, partner. Yep, that's a always a good thing. Three and thirty. Nice, nice pass. Oh, we said it at the same time. And a nice follow, Dr. J. I'm sure uh, Coach Ryan's not going to be happy with that because he already missed the shot. Obviously, before they would have gotten the follow-up easily. Uh, they would have gotten the rebound easily. We take a full timeout and a chance for Alaska to talk things over and Purefoot as well. Mayan Gabi, ganin yung tanan eh, all of you watching and besides in Mindanao, sa mga taga Pakulot ka, Giluilo, Mayan Gabi man sa inyo, about damo tao sa bunga, 17,000. And uh, joining all of you wherever you are. Well, you're talking about Pakulot, my buddy Alex is in Pakulot, so I'm sure no no dyan dahil addict sa PBA yun. 37 to 30, Aliados back on the floor. Kirby Raimondo zips it over to Roger, back to Kirby, lets it fly. Yan lang ang problema mo. If Kirby plays on top and you let a small man guard him, he can shoot over you. Of course, he has to make that kind of shot. Hindi naman madali yun. I like the way he shoots it with utter confidence, supreme confidence. 3-0 sila, pati. Saka, siya yung malaki. Sige, kayo rumibaw dyan. Okay, sa swak pa to. Miller curls. Just short. Raimundo picks up the rebound. Two and a half. Roger attracts everybody. Ball will stay yes. with Pilfitz. With a shot clock of 14. That's what Nathan who started uh, for Alaska here tonight. Back on the floor. Two twenty-six remaining. Back to the man who inbounded the ball. Always a dangerous situation if you're playing defense. LA, ball fake, drop inside, but Nathan can't shoot. Tenorio with time to spare, 10 seconds on the shot clock. The crossover dribble. Well, one of the few times that they're able to penetrate because they didn't use any high pick and rolls and it was a one-on-one -on -one with the big man helping up downstairs. Mark Bingris collecting foul number three with two minutes and three remaining. That could be a bad sign for Purefoot because he's really been an anchor of defense Silang Dalawa ni Rafi Rubis. Para nakita na rin ni Pingris yung kanyang reach dito. No? So, matalak, this is the Tenorio to toss team up. We are KFC. This is delivery of the quarter. Enjoy watching PBA action. Finger looking good food. 887-8888 now. Last Sunday, pamilya namin. Galit yan. Ito sa mundo. Dalawang original recipe. Dalawang spicy. Ubus lahat. 
Hindi, masarap na. Ubus lahat talaga. Mga pamangking ko. Tapos iniinom pa yung gravy. Nag-order ka pa ng gravy. Oo, oh, at kasi doon din, hindi talaga kasya oh, yung, 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 yung order ka na extra. Yan, friend. Order ka rin ng cold slow. Larry Ponacer, three steps ahead. You know, Larry is a guy that they really should use. Why? Larry has played in championships. Larry was played in a championships in his rookie year and won rookie of the year with Red Bull. Yes, indeed. And he really played well. You know, he's a guy who can play. All he's coming off an injury that happened in uh, the semifinals. This was uh, aside from his college injury before. Oh. Kirby again! In and out. Pero nandun na naman yung linya. Alaska tends to end up watching the Kirby Raimundo shot. Nice dish off at the last moment. Who will not end and get the bounce to uh, trickle in, but he'll go to the line. Now those are the things that Alaska usually finishes up very well. Usually three-point play, yeah. but they've missed already two of that kind, two of the same type of uh, shots here in this ball game in the first half. But they're making a comeback here, oh, yes. Well, to up with his second foul. Now, this is something you will not want to miss. A variety of options for you to watch this. And just 11 days ago, before the event, Pacquiao floating March 14, the deciding at the Dallas Cowboy Stadium. We're in the backlands' most glorious battles on solar TV as we come down to the event every night at 11 p.m. February 28 to March 13, exclusively here on solar TV. Every night is Pacquiao night on solar TV. TV, now you know. Yung pa masakit kay, uh, kay, ano, kay uh, Hugnatan. Dapat three-point play, but he only got one point out of it because oh, he nah. missed the first free throw. Now, is this the closest they've been? Yeah. Yes, I think. Yes. yes. They came to within six. Hang time. And a chance to inch in even closer here. Well, there might be three more offensive plays for us here. Here is one. That won't work. Toss tried to climb over the backs of his opponents. In the meantime, the dish up at the last moment. And right the way there's a foul. Good foul by Larry Fonashier. They're not in the penalty. So he fouled him before he could even attempt a shot. And he passed off. So it'll be just be a side court roll. Now because Alaska played that well, if Pilfoots plays quickly, they also have a two-on-one situation available to them. Yes. Fonashier collected his second foul. Larry trying to keep in step with Yap. Yap with that layup, it won't bite. And a new opportunity for Alaska to come in even closer. Lieutenant Adrenaline gets it to drop. A good timeout called here by uh, Coach Ryan Gregorio. 30 second timeout ito. Tatlo na lamang ang lamang. Ito ang paborito nating parahon na Handy Picks. Yes! What to you by Henry Pinks? I'm first at the bahay mo. Bansol seals all. Bakit ha? Sabi ni Ray, tukang na, ipipicks ko muna. Nagkakagulo tayo na wala yung sampula lamang natin. 25.8 siya, wag tayo mag-apura, wala tayong turnover. Pwede tumira tayo, malapit-lapit na doon sa oras. Ano bang butas ang pwede nating tapalan ng kote rito ha? Ayaw ko naman sabihin, ah ito na lang ha. Napali ito na rin. But, uh, you know, got real good products helping us here in oh, the PGA. Absolutely. They're all our friends here, and we got to know them a little better throughout the conference. It's this crowd of 17,000. Oh, ako, nira-round off ko lang, ha? Hindi, medyo marami na natin. Oh, Kanina nakita ko si yung mga ibang uh, reserve seats, wala pa tao. Uh -huh. Obviously, benta, nabenta na yan. Eh. And 17, 17 nothing Grand Channel sort of enjoying the action and by the way some of the winners of the PBA uh, student sports writers competition will be given their prizes later on of the future uh, crop of sports writers the guy from UP won it the meantime Roger they have the time to use Oh, but a turnover here. Ang sakit nun para kay Kanyaleta. This is the thing. When you call that timeout, yun ang reminder mo. Huwag tayong magkapura. Huwag tayong magka-turnover. Ngayon, huwag tayong pumaul. Dahil nasa penalty tayo. Ito naman si Eli. Pinagalan masyado ang laro. Kala niya matagal ba ako na? And he suddenly realized, let's try it if we can. Oh! What a shot! Kobe! Kobe! Kobe, yes, kanina. May pinagalan ko si Kobe kanina. Oh, yeah. 
And the series has taken on a different complexion. At least here in the first half, it's 40 apiece. With Tenorio deciding, uh, let's do something about this before we high up to the locker room. Dominic Uy is uh, just about ready to chat with somebody very important from Pure Foods. If they is ready, go ahead, take it away. Dominic is with Roger. Yeah. Thank you, Seth. Roger, magandang simula niyo, pero itong uh, second quarter, humabol na itong Alaska Eaton. Okay. Yun yung problema namin, medyo nag-relax yung mga kasama namin na kasama ko sa yun yung team, nag-relax na depensa. Kaya siguro sa second half, kaya na namin yung depensa namin, kailangan kibayan pa namin. Alright, thank you, Roger. Seth, Dr. J. Thanks a lot, Dominic. And a bit of a slip defensively on the part of Pierpont, especially towards the end of the second one. Here's that shot that uh, you were talking about, Dr. J. Well, here, he took his time, but then he realized that he's not going to be able to penetrate. They're ready to close in with that uh, box defense of theirs. And he takes it and challenged by Roger Yap. Plenty of time left. There could have been a possible rebound play. No white shirts coming into the picture, but it just went in. Kung sa kabila yun nangyari, sumabog yung last ka pa, saka sa pure foot fans yun nandun. Bumagsak lahat ang pangarap na Parang tinira yung kinover mo dati si Michael Jordan, tinira yung tira na yun against Utah. Back in a moment with halftime.